Hey there, and welcome back to a special Halloween edition of Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're going to jump back to a build I made three years ago and the most popular video here on the channel, my haunted mansion. When I originally designed this building, I had envisioned a greenhouse right alongside of this thing, creepy, old, and eerie. And, you know, this was just such a big build that I thought I should probably focus on this and then at a later date build a greenhouse. So it's really nice to see this thing, you know, come to fruition and have it next to the haunted house. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you think it goes well right next to it, I'm really happy with it. Now, when I was over in Venice about a month and a half ago, I walked past this one building as I was leaving the city and it had a really awesome facade and these recessed windows that when I saw those, I knew that's how I wanted to design the facade of the greenhouse. So that's where that inspiration came from. Just in time for the holidays coming up. If you want to help support the channel and get something really cool for yourself, two quick affiliates, Firelight Fable Candle Company, TWC Tenant Checkout gets you 10% off your entire order. All awesome scents for all your tabletop games and for just lighting around the house. A tremendous company. As well as my newest affiliate, Into the AM. You can get these amazing graphic tees. Super comfortable. Great fit. I recommend going over there. TWC 10 at checkout. 10% off your entire order there as well. All right, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, let's kick this video off with the Dark Forest Candle by Firelight Fables Candle Company. And if you want to help support the channel, you can grab a set of these plans. They'll help you with this build uh, quite a bit. If not, just follow along. All right, so we've got a really fun shape and design here. And we're gonna trace it out three times on some two inch XPS foam. Stacking these up, we're gonna do this the Gerard Boom method. And we're gonna stack everything up and remove the pieces that we don't want. Now, because the Proxon is limiting us in the height that we can cut, we have to cut that in half in order to be able to make the rest of the cuts that we need to uh, for this build. So it's not exactly six inches tall. You can see I've cut about maybe an inch or so off of that one to make the total height roughly five inches tall. You'll notice a little black line there. I do that on a lot of my stuff when I have you know, multiple pieces of foam stacking just to make sure that they end up lined up properly. Sometimes even if you place them upside down uh, after you've made a cut, they don't line up exactly the same. And here I'm just using my fingers to guide my foam along the fence to make sure that my cut stays nice and straight. And that will remove any of the imperfections in the block. All right, make sure you wear a respirator here and just take your time sanding this nice and slow. It's going to have a nice smooth finish once we're done. This is one of my favorite tools when working with foam. All right, you can see there's about maybe a quarter of an inch uh, offset line on each one of these. We're going to have to measure these out and make some pretty delicate cuts around the edge of this block. So that cut that we had there was gonna be the walls. The very first cut that we had was the uh, foundation of the greenhouse. And you can see how much I'm using the foot pedal. That little red light is the on and off of the Proxon. And I'm just turning the heat on and off as I'm moving the foam just to make sure uh, that the, uh, you know, the wire's on the line. So you can see how valuable that foot pedal is. If you want to pick that foot pedal up or any other tools you see in this video, you can find a link to them for all of my Amazon affiliates on my website at tabletopwitchcraft.com. Okay, now for a lot of people that watch my channel, you know that I love working with hot glue. It allows me to keep working quickly. But in this build, there's a lot of little delicate pieces and I ended up having to use some tacky glue and a lot of pins to pin these together. And I gotta tell you, I got a newfound respect for tacky glue. I'll definitely be using it a lot more in my future builds because it sets up pretty quick and uh, I was real happy with the outcome. Here's an assortment of windows from ShiftingLands.com. 
You can pick all these up as well as some of this roof trim that we're going to use later on in the video. Now all we have to do is press this into the foam for our outline. That's going to give us the exact outline of the window. For the exterior piece, we want to go about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more wider than the window so we can have a nice recessed look. Using some patch and paint, we can use that to fill any unwanted gaps on the exterior wall. And we can then put our stone texture right over that and you'll never even know that there was patch and paint there. So that's a very valuable, uh, you know, item to have in your arsenal. And right now these windows, they just dry fit in here. I just wanted to get an idea of what I was working with and how it would look. Now I highly recommend taking a scalpel knife and it takes a little bit of time, but carving out your stones and then using a pencil to do the indents, it gives you a much more realistic 3D look. You can see right there, I did not do it. And when we spin it around, you can see right here, I did cut it with the X-Acto and it gives you a much rounder, natural looking stone. The nice thing about the scalpel is that it is extremely sharp, sharper than an X-Acto knife and it allows you to get some really nice, precise, circular cuts as well, which is why I'm using that pretty uh, pretty often now. It was another thing recommended by Gerard Boom when he came to visit me this summer. If you haven't seen his videos, I'll put a link up above to that series. We made a really awesome crypt and uh, graveyard scene from the items that he made while he was visiting. Now you can see by sliding that piece into place, we have that recessed look. That's gonna add a lot of nice detail. And we wanna bevel all these edges. You can see how sharp that scalpel is. I don't even have to make a sawing motion with it. I can just pull it in the direction I want and it cuts the foam really nice. If you're enjoying this video and my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. All right, now we're going to go with some very thin, less than an eighth of an inch thick rolled clay. We're going to let that dry, cure, and we're going to use that for the floor of this greenhouse. And right now I'm making some planters. I made these in last week's video, so I'm not going to show how I made those, but essentially it's one gigantic planter compared to what I made last week. I'll put a link up above to that video so you can check that out. And I was really surprised at how nice this clay cut. It's got some nice texture. And uh, if we're off by our cut just a little bit, not a big deal. We're gonna end up covering up the edges of this anyway with some super glue and uh, baking soda. Now, as I mentioned in last week's video, this is where I embedded some magnets into the floor, coat this clay sheet with some tacky glue, placing it over those magnets. It's so thin that our, uh, you know, our planters that we made in last week's video are going to snap right on top of this with no problem. Now, once you get this planter in place, I highly recommend pulling the walls off just in case some tacky glue gets on those you don't accidentally glue the walls down just pull it off once you get all these pins in place all right now I don't throw any of these pieces out and I'm glad I didn't this is a very thin piece that I ended up using for the next level of my roof and it's in two pieces because like we had the issue before I couldn't cut it, it was too long to fit um, you know underneath the proxon wire All right, going back to some more scrap again. I'm glad we didn't throw these pieces out. Not that we would, these are some big blocks. But we're gonna cut it and just make these simple cuts right here. If you have the angle cutter for the Proxon, it's another shifting line tool. It'll help make these cuts really simple and easy. All right, once we have these traced out, nice little fun tip. If we don't want to see a line, cutting into our roof, poke a little hole out on a scrap piece on the inside that we're not gonna need, and then and then refeed your Proxon wire through that hole, then begin your cut, and then when you're done, release the wire, pull it out, and you'll have a nice seamless cut when you're done. All right, this little piece right here, 
just like we did with the main part of the greenhouse. We're just cutting this out so we can have a recessed section for some more windows. And this piece is gonna be a beam for the top of our roof. Now, yes, super glue does melt foam. So I just put a little bit on here, mostly covering some of the clay up. Uh, you'll see my fingers covered up because I actually ended up slicing it open pretty good uh, when I cut that old bottle of super glue. So be careful. <laughs> that did not feel good. All right, now we're ready to add some black paint and Mod Podge to this piece. Now I grabbed a piece of dollar store foam core and I cut that in half. So it's a pretty thin piece, trying to keep it to scale. And this is going to be the metallic roof. Now I wanted to have a nice blend here. So I hooked up the airbrush and we're going to paint all of the stone. And then the roof, I'm just using a metal spatula so I don't get any overspray on the walls because it's a different or lighter gray. Now, if you don't have an airbrush, a can of paint, a rattle can would be really helpful here. I almost don't even recommend using a paintbrush. It would take you forever. Yeah, I would get an airbrush or a rattle can of paint. Now, here's a really cool trick. After this was done, you could still see the seam a little bit with the glue. So I took the hot nozzle of my hot glue gun and remelted the uh, glue lines right into place and you couldn't even see them when I was done. So I know you can hide these seams with more foam, but you can also melt them back in place. It was really awesome. I put some washes on this later on in the video and you couldn't even tell that the seams were there. Now I wanna vary the colors up just a little bit. I'm not worried about doing each individual brick I'm, or stone. You'll see once we're done, it's just adds a nice little variation having some brown in there. Now for some rust effect. Uh, originally I was gonna have uh, these be like a green patina, but I ended up doing that with the roof and I didn't wanna have everything the same. So we're just gonna rust these out. And when I was done here, I ended up going back with some pigment fixer and using a medium rust and then a light rust on the window frames. And uh, yeah, they really came out nice. These three paints right here are what I use to make my own patina color for the roof. And this is just a antique, I think it was bronze or antique copper that I used. By using the airbrush, how we can get a nice uniform look. If you look at something like the Statue of Liberty, you can see how that green patina is almost uniform. It's not like a drippy rust. So I thought the airbrush really was the only way to go on this one. All right, we gotta be careful here when we glue the windows in. We don't want a big bump of hot glue because we gotta put the metal roof on top. So I glued the windows in first made sure it was nice and flat, and then I glued it again to add the metal roof. Now busting out some black wash, homemade black wash to go on the build. And then for the floor right here, I use a homemade brown wash. And then I thought that the roof definitely needed the black wash and it looked much better once I had applied that. And I added this decoration right here because again, I wanted this to go hand in hand with the haunted house and this sort of follows in suit with that look. So I was happy the way that turned out. I want to paint up a few pots. So I'll get some buckets, some pots. We're gonna stick these and glue them in place outside of where if you wanna put a grid on this, you can. Uh, these pots, a uh, flower sack or a bag of dirt or whatever, is all going to be placed outside of the playable area. We're going to have some plants growing up the inside of the greenhouse. This one right here I had busting out through the glass. I picture this being, you know, an old greenhouse, not really being kept up. Uh, got some busting out of the ceiling here.
And all of these plants are from Diorama Precipe. Absolutely gorgeous products. I highly recommend checking them out. This is my homemade mud texture. I'm gonna put this in the planter. If you wanna see how to make this, I'll put a link up above to my catacomb video where I show how to make this. And the nice thing about it is it's the color of the dirt that I want. And I'm gonna place the plants in these that's the same color as the plants growing up the wall in that section. So it looks all uniform, it's really nice. But also, the mud texture is going to act as a glue that's going to hold these in place as well. And if you're wondering, the planters, the pots, the buckets, they're all Hearst Arts. I'll put a link up above to my Hearst Arts video that shows you how to work with these and make them. Sticking a little bit of that mud texture in that pot right there will allow me to have some of these nice plants sticking out of them vertically. And a little UV resin uh, in this bucket right here. Hit it with some light. We got a cool little water bucket. And then finally leaves. I want to show this because I'm covering up that bucket quite a bit. And that's the thing. You don't have to have all of your cool fun little details blatantly obvious to everybody. Make people look for these things every now and then. It, I don't know, it just feels like it brings out a lot more to the craft when things aren't so obvious. All right, a little rubbing alcohol sprayed on this breaks up the surface tension, I guess, on the leaves. And we're gonna take a little uh, scenic glue and we're gonna dab this in place. You'll see right here when I drop it on, it spreads out nice and quick. And then just a little bit of grass. I put, I think, one tuft and I ripped it into three and placed it around here. That's all it needed, not a lot, just a little something. Grabbing one of these little crows here. We're going to put a murder of crows. If anybody out there knows how many is a murder, leave a comment in the comment section below. And the cool thing is these are a soft plastic, so heating them up with the paper clip, pushing them onto there, it will allow them to stick. You don't even have to glue them. And this is all set to get placed right next to the haunted house. So I finally feel like my haunted house is complete. Let me know if you have any other ideas for additions you'd like to see to the haunted house or to the grounds around the haunted house 
and they'll probably make it on a future Halloween episode. Now, if you liked the video or you took anything away from it, please hit that like button and subscribe. It's a really quick and easy way for you to show your support of the channel, and I really appreciate it. A lot of time, effort, and money goes into this. Speaking of that, you can join me over on Patreon. We can gain access to my private Facebook page where we can chat and I can answer all kinds of questions you might have about crafting. Or you can join a TR over there where we can actually hang out live at night during my live streams on Discord and we can hang out there as well. Also, real quick, TWC10, check out Into the AM, newest affiliate. Grab yourself some clothes, get yourself a discount, as well as Firelight Fables Candle Company. You get some merchandise, I get a kickback. It helps fund the channel and I really appreciate it. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.